Well, hello, hello, everybody. Welcome back to Backstage Bimbo TV. My name is Allison Rouse, your most notorious groupie and author of We've Got Tonight, The Life and Times of Notorious Groupie, me. Hope everybody's doing fantastic. Today we're doing another midweek bonus episode, and it's a good one. It's going to be a good one, because we're going to talk about how to be a groupie. I get a lot of emails, questions asking me, I want to start hanging out with bands, I want to be a, mm, the M word, we don't, we don't say the M word here, but you want to go meet the band, you want to hang out, you want to have a life, I'm going to let you in, I'm going to give you the clues how to do it, I'm not going to turn you into some creative writing class and fascinate you with stories, mm mm. I'm going to tell you what's worked for me, what still works for me. So, and today we're just going to have a little mimosa because I've been filming um, some vlogs earlier about New Year's Eve and a couple bands. Don't want to waste my champagne. So, all right, everybody, grab your mimosas, kick up your heels, and let's have a little rocky talkie, shall we? Cheers, big ears. Mmm. Mm, Shams has always been my favorite. Okay. So, like I said, I get a lot of emails from young girls wanting to become part of the rock scene, wanting to be a groupie, wanting to know how to start. And the one thing that I get, and anybody who knows me, how do I be a muse? You don't, honey. Because let me tell you, let me pre preface this of how to meet the band before I say this. A muse by definition is someone who inspires the song, inspires the art. Whether it's going on stage, but most of the time in rock and roll, it's about inspiring the song. The songs don't come from you being this ethereal being and leaving a trail of glitter on their soul. No, honey, it comes from having a fight with the lead singer in Chicago. That'll get them their biggest hit. Mm -hmm. that, that ended your relationship. It's It comes from having to leave someone when you really don't want to, but you know it's the right thing. It comes from heartache. Most songs are not written about the best times they've had with a the groupie. They're written about the heartbreak with the groupie, heartbreak break with the woman at home. They're written about sadness. That's what a groupie is. She's putting her heart and soul, or a muse, excuse me. A muse is about letting her heart and soul be exposed to the world. Her most private moments, her heartbreak, being exposed to the world. I never wanted to be a muse because I don't, if you've read my book, my book is only sex, drugs, and rock and roll. It's not the emotion that went into the relationships. Like James Hetfield for five years, Vinnie Paul for eight years, Steve Jones for five, a couple others, one bass player from one of the biggest bands in the world, 13 years. Lead singer of another big uh, new wave band. I was his rebound girl after each of his divorces. And I was happy to be because, oh yeah, we'll vlog about him. I'm not going to tell you who it is though. Mm-mm. You know, having to leave him when you really don't want to, but you know it's the right thing because you can't handle his drugs. This is where the muse actually comes from. The heartbreak, the drug use, this, the, the sad side that... So, first of all, I never wanted to be a muse, so don't ask me how to be a muse, but that's what a muse is. And once you understand that, then you can become a groupie. And how to be a groupie. First and foremost, like I tell plenty of girls, your instincts are leading you here. Follow them. It's not that groupies just wake up one day and decide to become rock and roll sluts or whatever you want to call us. This is something that's deep in our souls. From young ages, we're just naturally drawn to the music. And that it's not about sitting around talking about the music. And the music is what takes us there, but for me as a groupie, I wanted to know what the music was like 
in real life. And it isn't always pretty. Like I said, being a muse, that's a bunch of bullshit of that Almost Famous. Don't even watch that movie. You want to hang out backstage? Don't watch Almost Famous. Don't watch Rockstar. Don't read any books. Follow your own instincts. First and foremost, follow your own heart and soul. Don't borrow from me, from anybody. Just do what you think is right, is, is what's leading you to your own soul tribe. Once you understand that, and it's not about being fascinated with some Hollywood glamorized bullshit, and you realize it's not this great time out on the road. Once you get that idea in, in, out of your head of being a muse and to follow your own rock and roll fantasy, your own instincts, and make it your own experience, that's when you can start to become a groupie. But let's tell you, tell you how to meet the band because it hasn't changed in 30 some odd years of me hanging out with bands. A lot of people in New York and Los Angeles, this will be harder for you. Chicago, where bands don't, their tour buses may not be by the hotel, they may be in underground parking, or these are big cities with a lot of business and family and friends that you're not gonna have the easiest time. So the general way, Today, we have a thing called Polestar. I'll put a link in the description. You can type in any band's name and it will give you their tour itinerary. So you can see if that band is coming in the night before the show. Because if they are coming in the night before the show, and you can see where they are if they're not coming near you, but maybe an hour or two away, three hours, however you're willing to drive, you can see where they are. Always pick a day where they have the night off before the show. That's very important if you're going to be traveling to meet the band. Not if you're with them on the road, but if you want to meet the band, they're not playing in your city, look at Polestar, pick a city close by you where they have the night off before the show. That's very important because you won't have tickets. You want to, don't buy tickets. You don't have to. But if you want to meet the band, you want to meet them the night before the show. That's when you kind of get to know them a little better. They're around, you're talking to them, and they'll put you on the guest list. And where do you meet the band? You go to your bus, excuse me, not the buses, go around the hotels in your town that are close to the gig. Most of the time they are very close to the gig unless it's like a Red Rocks in Denver or a USANA Amphitheater here. They're way on the outskirts of town, they're not gonna be close to the gig. But, as I've said before, all the tours use the same hotels because the booking agents get good deals because they're booking for a hundred or so people and they use the same hotels tour after tour city after city they're getting deals so 95 percent of the time most of your bands are going to stay in the same hotel in your city or hotels they might switch like i said most of the time in the 80s it was the marriott once we got kicked out of the marriott and the bands quit staying there, it became the Sheraton, Sheraton and the Red Lion, and then they built the Monaco. It's been the Monaco Hotel here for 20 some odd years. Every band, every band. The only band that did not stay there was U2's road crew, because that crew was way too big to fit in that hotel. They couldn't fit them all there. So they stayed over at the Sheraton where there were three times the rooms. So you'll see that they'll be using the same bands and or same hotels. How do you find those hotels? Where are the tour buses parked? Usually out in front of the hotel, in the parking lot of the hotel, by the hotel, near the hotel. So you'll know that that's the hotel they're staying at. Find the tour buses. They don't have a tour bus. There's a band you want to meet. And they're a big band like Metallica, like Iron Maiden, Death Leopard, any band with a plane I would go out to your airport's general aviation. Again, Polestar is gonna come in handy because it's gonna tell you where the band is coming from and if they have a night off before the show. Because if they have the night off before the show, like I said, if they're coming from Denver like Metallica would, they would get off the stage, shower, go hit the hotel, grab their stuff, and go to their plane, fly into Salt Lake City. They would check in about three o'clock in the morning. 
So kind of gauge, like some bands, most bands these days won't fly out till the afternoon because check-in is one o'clock. They can get different check-in times, you know, but generally one in the afternoon check-in time, everybody goes in, gets their stuff settled in the room, decide what they're going to do, maybe grab some lunch, but they always still to this day meet at the hotel bar. Find the buses at the hotel. Go meet at the hotel bar. Go sit at that hotel bar. You'll see them wander in. They'll wander in a little bit before, you know, starting around 5, 6 o'clock in the afternoon. Maybe earlier, depending on what time they all get in, get settled. Because they'll meet at the hotel bar. Everybody has their little click. So you may have a click with their lead singer, guitar player, the tour manager, and the drum tech. They're going out to dinner. So is the next click. They're going out to dinner. But where are they all meeting? the hotel bar. Dinner's usually about seven. About eight or nine. They'll be back to the hotel bar. Relaxed, fat and happy, ready to mingle. Do some talking, hanging out. So guess what? You just met the band the night before the show. You have a chance to maybe meet your favorite guy in the band or get to know some of the road crew because they are awesome guys. And they work for other bands, so they when they roll through with another band, they'll ring you up and put you on the guest list. So never, ever discount someone because they're a roadie or a tour manager or whatever. Just because they're in the band doesn't make them the supreme being gods of sex, drugs, and rock and roll and of every fantasy. You may have more chemistry with that roadie. We've all dated some. Because if you're not dating someone on the road crew, then you're just a star fucker. Don't be a star fucker. Don't at all. Let me see, let me see. Okay. So, you've met the band at the hotel. You've hooked up with your guitar player. You're hanging out with them. Do you want to come to the show tomorrow? Of course you do. Now, in the 80s, it was all of us, so we would put, it was me plus three at every single time. Danny plus three, Kristen plus three. So always make room for a friend, just in case you will have a friend with you or bring in a friend. Always just kind of me plus one. If you don't have a plus one, that's okay. You don't need to give away the extra pass and ticket. You can keep them and hang on to them for memorabilia. But in rock and roll, we always have each other's back. So make sure you have your friend's back. If you've got a friend with you and they didn't hook up with someone and they didn't get on the guest list and you did, you plus one, plus two, whatever. Rule of thumb in rock and roll. It's like on the bus. Don't go number anything but number. The only thing to do in a tour bus toilet is the golden shower. You don't poo in that toilet. You don't put toilet paper in that toilet. Nothing. I've said this before. That's kind of a rule, another rule of thumb in rock and roll. Always you plus one. Have your friends backs. It will show that you're a good friend. That you've got your friends back. Sorry, you have to unplug. Whoa. Ooh, okay. We're a little crooked now, but that's okay. Anyway, so that's how you meet the band the night before. If they are not in town the night before, then sound check usually happens about 4 o'clock for any big arena tour, club tour, anything. Sound check is always going to happen around 4 o'clock. The guys in the band will start rolling in about 3. So get to the gig around 3 o'clock. You don't want to be a ramp rat if you don't have to. But, again, these days a lot more tours are, you know, taking more days off, so more than likely. But, you can still get to the gig around 3 o'clock in the afternoon and maybe run into someone. A lot of the road crew guys will be like, hey, what's your name? Come on the bus, have a drink. Kick back and hang out, relax, enjoy. See where the night's going to take you. Put on a life vest and have a couple drinks because it can be a blast and always number one rule let go of what you think this night is going to be like let go of this is exactly how it's going to go it may go that way but it may not and if you are so stuck with being with that damn bass player who you have no chemistry with that has his wife out on the road or whatever it's going to ruin your night so if you see uh, the guy you want with someone else and you're backstage, who cares? You're backstage, you're part of the family. Go mingle, get to know people, have a good time. Enjoy the show. Hang out. Like I said, 
The road crew guys are awesome guys. You never know who you're going to have chemistry with. I've lost at least three friends to marrying roadies. Mm hmm Nothing wrong with it. Like I said, rock stars make great friends and lovers, but they make shitty husbands, so... Don't fall in love with everybody you fall into bed with. There's another rule. Always stick to that. That was an 80s fucking number one thing. Because we were falling in bed with a lot of people. But that chemistry may strike once in a while. And like I said in a previous vlog, never ignore your gut. Knock on that door. Remember that sign the universe sent you, whatever. Follow it. Let go of any preconceived notions because they're just going to inhibit your night. So get your ass to the ho on Polestar, get to the hotel the night before. Like I said, they're usually down in the hotel bar around 6-ish. They're going to dinner around 7-ish. And every time any rock tour, and even the last tour that I hung out, hung out on that I saw in 2019, Robert Plant, I didn't even know what they were getting in town. I just happened to be downtown and my lawyers went across the street to the hotel bar because that hotel bar happens to be a local favorite. Was sitting there. And all of a sudden I start, I look out the window because there's glass doors leading to the hallway by the elevators. <clears throat> and every rock, roadie, rock star, tour manager, groupie, we all do this. All of a sudden I look at, I'm watching people, you know, it catches my eye as people walk by the glass doors. And I look over and I look out. There's Robert. Oh God, there's, oh, there's Martin. Holy shit. And I just start seeing in every single one of those musicians and roadies as they walked by the hotel bar. They will scope out the scene. It is a fucking habit. 30 some odd, 40 some odd years in rock and roll. Just can't break that habit. It's just instinct. You automatically, if you're walking by the hotel bar, when you're checking into that hotel, they're looking. And if they see you pretty girls sitting there, they will remember that. And they will be like, yeah, let's meet down at the hotel bar. Mm -hmm. And they may ask you to dinner. They may not be like, hey, we're going to be back in like an hour. Are you going to be around? Yeah. Because Lord knows who else you're going to meet in that hour. You never know. I've had that happen sometimes. Mm -hmm. So, but like I said, if they don't get in the night before, then you need to get your asses down to the gig at soundcheck and get as close to the buses and where the entrance where people are driving in is because that's where the band's going to be coming in. Let you be seen. I, I don't recommend because that's kind of not a thing that's really done except for autograph seekers these days. But if that's your only choice to get down to the gig, especially if it's like a club gig or a fairground gig, a smaller gig than a big arena tour, easy peasy to get in because they're bored. They're sitting around. They're playing a club gig in the middle of nowhere. They're going to be there, but just get there about 3 o'clock so that when those boys pull up for sound check, you're kind of hanging out or you might already be inside. You never know. So get your ass there. Mm -hmm. Now, once you got the boys interested, you're sitting at the hotel bar. You hang out. Your favorite lead singer is coming over with a couple guys. They just happen to sit next to you at the hotel bar. They introduce themselves. You guys are talking. Oh, they say, what's your name? My name's Allison. What's yours? Don't sit there and be like, because it's Robert Plant sitting next to you. Oh, I'm Allison Roberts. So nice to meet you. Uh -huh. That's going to turn them off instantly. I know a lot of this may seem controversial, but looks like it's time for me because we all need a little controversy. Because mm -hmm. we need to be told how it really is to be a groupie. Like I said, it's not shooting rainbows at your asses, honey. But when you're hanging out with the band, do not sit around going, I so love your music. You're like my favorite. You touched my soul. Because, honey, that's going to turn them off and they're not going to touch your JJ. Because that's, no. Because you don't want them just to touch your soul. You want to be a part of their world. Don't be a, don't be a big fan. I mean, we are fans. We all love the music. But it's about something much more than the music. A real groupie knows those boys better pack that rock star in their road case in the dressing room when they get off stage. Because by the time we're getting back to the hotel bar, I'm just going to be fucking the man he is off stage. So when you're with him, realize you're not just with the rock star. You're with the man he is off stage. 
Everybody in the world wants to see the rock star. Just like everybody in the world wants to see the groupie is one thing. But we are all so much more than that. So open the, let him open himself up to you as more than just the rock star and be something else besides that once he's off the stage. That's a huge thing with me and my friends. We never talked about the music or the history or the band or all this stuff. We talked about them or just stupid shit that came up like just again letting go of anything you want to say of any preconceived notions or any preconceived um, conversations in your head and let it flow naturally like you would any other time because you don't want these guys don't want to feel like <sighs> you're only seeing this much of who they are you know what I mean everybody wants this part of them everybody wants the facade the skin deep shit get beyond the skin deep don't talk about the music talk about more than that bring up stupid subjects be someone they want to hold a conversation with because that's just as stimulating as the tits are, your tits are in the top you're wearing. You know what I mean? So let them be, let them show your, themselves to you as they are off that stage behind all the rock and roll so facade. Once the pyro's gone and the lights are down and the stage is torn apart and in the semi headed to the next town. Never talk about the music. Let the fans do that. Let them deal with that while they're at work. When they're at the hotel bar, they're not at work anymore. Just let them be the guys they are off stage. Mm -hmm. Yep. I always use condoms. Just, it's... You want to be hanging out in rock and roll? Keep yourself pristine. As possible. Shit happens. But... Don't get knocked up. Don't get a disease. Don't get smells like Stephen Piercy. Use condoms. Stay safe. Protect your body. Have some self-respect. And don't always do what these guys say. If you don't want to do something, no is okay in rock and roll. These guys here, no is no. They know this. They've respected this. You know, so if you don't want to do something then don't do it. Get up and go. Always have self-respect. Always stand strong in who you are and what you do not want. Just because, you know, he's Marilyn Manson doesn't mean you have to sit in a kitty litter box. That's some people's gig, that S&M thing. It's not everybody's. So, if you're not comfortable with something, get up and go. Just because they're rock stars or roadies or whatever doesn't mean you have to do anything. Don't just respect your body physically, but mentally and emotionally as well. Respect your whole being. Because that's going to be hell of attractive to the musicians as well. They don't want some easy, okay, so let me suck the sweat out of your shirt and, and take care of you and go and get you water and wash your skivvies or, you know, they want someone, they have plenty of people to do that. They need their groupie to be there for them and let them be different. You know, you want to be behind the closed doors with a bottle of wine watching a movie? Let them reveal the men they are off the stage to you. It's very, very important. Okay? They're not just the guys you see online or in the album covers or in the videos or on that stage behind the pyro in the costumes. We all have to put that facade on for the night. Even when we're getting ready to go as groupies to go hang out with the band, we all have our rituals and we put our, what I call strapping my groupie boots on. They're putting their rock star gear on before they go on stage, but they're also taking it off when they get off stage. Make sure the rock star is left in the road case. Date the man he is off the stage. Because that's who you're going to see more of than you are going to be seeing that rock star on stage, okay? So these are things you want to be a groupie. Like I said, forget about being the muse thing because that comes from heartbreak, long relationships. Some of it does come from good times, like when Kristen and I were hanging out and Tesla started writing that song immediately but that was just kind of silly and stupid and it did end up on their second album but 
it's very rare that a lot of their songs are going to be like Motley Crue, Girls, Girls, Girls. Listen to all the songs you read. Even Dave Matthews, Crash Into Me is about sex and the little games he would play with the groupie or his wife or whoever. You know what I mean? Those happy songs are rare. Majority of the songs, deep emotional songs. So don't just think you're going to show up in your fur collar with your pea shades on because that's not what a muse is. It's The muse is a relationship, an emotion, an event. It's much bigger than just the woman. So don't let go of the whole muse thing. If you have a song written about you, cool. If not, cool. Who cares? I didn't, there have been songs written about me and I fucking hate it because it's especially one right now so twisted around into 12 different directions and I have to keep hearing it and hearing it and remembering why it was written because it was not a good night why that song was written. I hate it. Hate it. So let go of the muse thing. Get your asses to the hotel bars. Look for those tour buses. Go on Polestar. I am surprised how many people do not know, younger women who do not know. I've sent them links to Polestar and they're like, what's this? It's the groupie's guide to life on the road. It's your handbook to get into the band. This is the first thing you need. I mean, back in the 80s, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have anything. We went by our instincts and basically were sleuthing. We were being, you know, detectives and, all right, we're going to go to this band. This is what time we figured out how the road works. And it, to this day, for 30 some odd years, what is it, 2021? I started hanging out in 1985. I am four years away. Holy shit. Four years away from 40 years. And it is still the same. So get your asses on Polestar. Get their itinerary. If they're not coming to your town, pick a town that does not have a day, that they have a day off in. Because you're going to meet these guys at the hotel bar and you're going to have that time. But don't talk about the music. Make sure they introduce themselves to you because you don't have to sit there and be like, yeah, I know who you are. Uh huh. This is okay. Mm hmm. Because when you're just trying to date someone or to have a conversation, you don't want all that. You don't want all that. So, yeah, get your ass, find out, get to Polestar, find out where the buses are, get into that hotel bar. If they're not in town the night before, you need to get your butt to the gig by 3 p.m., depending on the gig. And if it's a small club, you might be able to just walk right in and stay there. I've done that a few times. That's how I met the band. There was a couple times with it, we couldn't find the band the night before, and we left notes on their tour bus with our phone numbers, and they called. So be creative. Be, you know, thought, think about it. Don't just be like, oh, I give up. I can't get to the band, or they have the night before. They're playing a gig. They may fly into your town at 3 o'clock in the morning and check in. They're fresh off stage. They've been hanging out. They might be feel. They might want to go to bed. They might want to smoke a joint with the groupie before they go to bed. Mm -hmm. So, learn how rock and roll works. Like I say, never discount the road crew because they're some of my best friends. I've dated a couple guys. They're great guys. They're part of the road family too. They're part of this rock world. They're part of what the music, the life, the music culminates in. We're all part of it. So, don't discount anybody on the road because this is life on the road. It's going to be the same. Once you get to know the um, analytics as YouTube puts it or the you know the way rock and roll works you're gonna be able to be a groupie and hang out and get to anybody and everybody you want like we did we just went above and beyond we knew where the bands were staying what time they were getting into into town we didn't make a big deal of your rock stars yay and we didn't give a shit about pictures and stuff. If you happen to take a selfie, cool. But don't be sitting there snapping pictures all night long for your Facebook and shit. No. Uh-uh. No, that makes them uncomfortable. That makes them feel like they have to put their rock facade on when all they really want to do is be the guy they are off. Mm. Excuse me, off the stage. So be kicked back. Be cool. Realize this is just your soul tribe. Not rock stars. Okay? So if that's how you, if you want to be a groupie, really listen to this. 
you want to go out on the road with these guys, make sure that they, what's the words I always say? Make it happen. Make sure those boys are flying you out and you have a ticket home. Make sure you trust this guy. Make sure you don't do anything but go pee pee on the tour bus. And make it your rock and roll experience. That's the most important thing. That's the difference between the 70s and the 80s groupies. The 70s groupies, because of the way society was at the time, were still kind of the side dish to the main dish of rock and roll. Now in the 80s, we kicked those doors down and we made it our rock and roll fantasy. We made it what we wanted it to be. We didn't give a shit about being in Rolling Stone and the world seeing us with these guys or anything like this. We just made it our rock and roll fantasy. And if we wanted to do something, we did. If we happened to take out on, on the road, we did because it's a blast. But also realize if you're going to meet this guy and you're going to go out on the road, you're not going to see a lot. You're in town 24 to 48 hours a day. So don't be expecting a big worldwide trip and you get to see Paris and the Louvre and stuff like that. It's not happening that way. You're going to be in, in London for 24 hours before you have to go hit Birmingham and then get your ass up to fucking Edinburgh, fly over to Ireland to have a day off before you, you know, when you go over to to Munich or wherever or Krakow wherever you're going next after you're constantly you have to be kind of more of a guy's girl to really spend a lot of time out on the road because you're surrounded by a lot of guys so you have to kind of get along with their sense of humor with their the ways of the road so if you understand all this and you understand and you realize that the people you are with is your soul tribe and this is just where your life has been asking you to go, then you're going to be okay. All the other stuff, get into the hotel bar, get into the gig, not talking about the music, that's all esoteric compared to what really takes us all here and what you really need to do. If you're someone who just wants to meet these guys, to brag with selfies and stuff, you're a star fucker, stay away. If you just want to hang out because these, this is where your heart and soul belong, then baby, you're already a groupie. So, just get your ass to the hotel bar. Start your life. Make it your rock and roll fantasy. And that's how you're going to be a groupie. Don't go in there going, I want to be a muse. I want to do this. I want to live. Don't live anybody else's Hollywood glamorized version of things. Live your own groupie life. We didn't have any of that. Nobody even knew who those people were when I was being a groupie. I was years into my groupie life before any books about groupies came out or anything. It was just pure instinct. Same with Danny, same with Kristen, same with Davini. We followed our hearts and souls because this is where it, we were meant to be. So you wanna be a groupie, follow your heart and soul. It's gonna take you where you need to go which is usually the hotel bar the night before the show, about six o'clock. They'll be back from dinner by nine and in the hotel bar. And then by the time they leave town, you'll be getting a late checkout by one o'clock. Mm -hmm. Get your ass to the general aviation because a lot of people don't realize when the bands fly in, they're in their own private plane. They're not going to the regular airport. And you can just drive right over to general aviation park and be like, hi. I mean, you can't just go running out on the tarmac, but you can watch to see where the guys are and you can follow them back to the hotel. And if they're at that hotel, probably more other bands coming through your town will be too. All right. So there you guys go. There's a few tips on how to be a groupie from a groupie who's been around the scene longer than anybody else who knows this like the back of my hand. All right, folks, if you like this little Rocky talkie, there's lots more where this came from. I still do have my cocktails and rocktails. And we haven't even, like, put a dent in the 80s yet. And there's still the 90s in Seattle living in the 90s. There's still Vegas years, which include a lot of crazy stuff. And not just rock stars. Bigger, couple big actors and crown princes that I don't even talk about in the book. So, you want to hear all this? You want to know some more stuff? Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button and hit my bells. And come join me for some more cocktails and rock tales. Cheers, big ears.